I left the firm I was working for after a number of years to become an independent financial advisor. I thought that that made sense for next steps for me. I had the blessing or the curse, depending how you want to look at it, of talking to, if, I'll probably put it somewhere in the title, over 50,000 people over the number of years that I was there. Talked to over 1,000 people per month, depending on the month, and all of those wonderful things. And in case you're not picking up on it here, this isn't going to be some fun, wacky, here's why you need to invest in modern, here's why you need to invest in vintage Pokemon story. This is going to be more of a, here are my real life experiences and why I left the financial industry entirely, because you've heard it before, but it just rang and, and hit me in a different way when I spoke to countless financial advisors, individuals, ex-brokers who were right there with me. They were in the trenches and hearing it from them, from the others who were in it, and just so I knew that I wasn't just some weird nut, it, it just hits different than when you hear from outsiders who say, yeah, of course all of Wall Street's corrupt. It, it's so true. But it's, it's so much more true than what you could ever possibly imagine. And I'm going to go ahead and expose some of that as best as I legally can. And I'll, I'll touch on this on, on some future videos, uh, depending on what kind of feedback I get from this, if people are even interested in this or not. Um, but the type of information and the knowledge, I, I will say that, from that world that I accumulated does carry over well. Fantastic. To investing in other markets. Uh, that's great. There are a lot of things I'm thankful for and that I wish I could do again. And there is so much of it that I wish I either never experienced or handled in a different way. So without talking about it too much here, 50, so over 50,000 people, that's more than what most people will talk to in 10 lifetimes, like literally talking to people. Not just saying, oh, hey, hey, to someone in the McDonald's line or whatever. I I got a decent sample size. Granted, most of those people were in the United States, you know, some, some foreign countries. But for the most part, that was a sample size from the United States. Working adults, though, who had 401ks, who had IRAs, who had a different type of brokerage account, whatever kind of tax code you want to pull out, they were investing in the stock market. All of them, all of them had the same questions. All of them didn't really know the difference between pre-87 and post-86 after-tax dollars in their investment accounts. They didn't even know the difference between Roth dollars and after-tax dollars in their 401k accounts and how the company match affected that. And granted, that's a particular niche subject. Why would you know something like that? Because you're never taught. You, you, you never learn about it. No one teaches you this crap in school. And you're, you're set up for, for failure, really. I, I am biased. I am a firm believer that I think there should be a financial course taught throughout high school. Like all four years. I think it should be, man it should be mandatory. That's a discussion for another day. It's, it was just, it was crazy because, and I, and I will say this too. Oh, well, you're stereotyping. Well, I do have numbers to back it up, of which I can't share with you. I will say, when I eventually worked my way up and I worked with high net worth clients, I was mainly talking to engineers, lawyers, and doctors. Those are the most people with the, who had the best bang for their buck. They cared about it the most. I'm not saying they're the smartest, they're the wisest. They generally and, and truly cared the most. That was the difference. It's not because some dude working at UPS is an idiot or anything like that. He just doesn't care. He just works his nine to five and he just wants to be done for the day. Doesn't care what his company matches or anything. Live your life however you want to. I will also say specifically for UPS men, I, I do know for sure that there are some of them that are killing it. I, I wish them nothing but the best. Everyone had the same type of questions, though, and they didn't really know how to take a loan out from their 401k plan. They didn't really know how their pension worked. They didn't understand the timing of it. They didn't understand the tax implications of it. Again, why would you know these things? 
So I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to take that, uh, that information, all this knowledge that I have now, and I'm going to become an independent financial advisor. I'm just going to help the world. Long story short, accumulated my book of business, started helping some people out locally. And then these companies that you work with, that you're somewhat affiliated with, that you're registered through, you can sling some of their product around. And guess what? Some of the product pays a little bit better than others. That didn't rub me the right way, if you know what I mean. I had an extreme issue with that. But hey, some companies just charge more, some charge less, fees, you know, all that sort of stuff, for lack of a better word. What I'm really trying to say is, <laughs> you get paid more money for selling worse products regularly. Across the board, it doesn't matter what company it was. I'm not going to say any names here, obviously. I was with all of the bigger ones, we'll say. Let's just keep it big. One, <laughs> so yeah, so I was paid for hotels and flights and so I can go out to these seminars and I had a bunch of different financial investment buddies I was working with at the time. And we were in this seminar and this is where it all changed for me. And I remember them sitting us all down saying, we've got a, a great new universal life policy for you guys. And here's how it's going to change the game. And we're going to show you how to structure this policy. So there's more cash value in it for your customers. So they can have a better retirement. First of all, what does that mean? Can you quantify that for me? So they go ahead and structure this out. And I will say, I, as a, an investment advisor, could have made way more money and almost for the rest of my life through ongoing recurring commissions if I just signed someone up to a fat IUL that they didn't understand. And because, oh, well, I've got this PDF chart that's got a bunch of numbers and a trajectory for you that, you're, that you certainly won't understand, but I'm going to break it down real simple for you, tell you what the final number in this account is. It makes perfect sense if you don't understand numbers. And it works like a charm because you've got a formal PDF that doesn't show you all of the fees within the account. It doesn't tell you what the terms of the policy are except in fine print toward the last 87 page of the thing. And I asked the question. Everyone was sitting around taking notes of this stupid, crappy product. And I, I, I was sitting in the front row. I raised my hand and I, <laughs> I'm never going to forget this. Uh, I, I'm trying to say this in the nicest way possible. Uh, I, I don't know. So I asked them and I, I, I simply, I simply asked them, what's the difference between this and selling someone a whole life or even a short term policy and then having them max out their Roth IRA plan? Can you tell me how and where that's better for them long or short term? And the two guys that were presenting the main guy, we'll call him he grinned through his teeth and he said, well, what's best for the customer is entirely our discretion. Meaning, that's a fancy way of saying, hey, it's up to you, however you want to angle this. And he said, there are a bunch of different ways that you can look at situations like this. And he started laughing. Now, at that point, I think you guys kind of know my personality already. I don't think I'm better than anyone. The fact that number one, he didn't address my question. And number two, he didn't address my question. He couldn't tell me why this amazing product was better than anything else that is cheaper and historically performs better for clients. But here's what he said right after that, right after that. Hey, did we mention for you guys that this is going to have the highest payout of all of our products starting October 1st or whatever it was? That's what he said. That's what he said. So I got up. I literally got up right after that. Meeting wasn't over. Seminar wasn't over. Whatever you want to call that. And I, and I looked down my friends who were sitting in the middle of the room, and I made sure I made eye contact with them as I was on my way out. 
So yeah, you make you make more money selling crappy product to people. I don't make as much money when I when I was an investment advisor, I made less money putting people into funds that made more sense to them. What does that do for someone like me who has virtually unlimited power to help people? I don't even have to disclose what kind of fees I get out of this. If they ask me, if they ask me, I can tell them. I was upfront about everything, but legally, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Sure, there are a lot of gray areas in the world, but I I wanted to I wanted to go on the record for letting you guys know that there's not a single financial advisor on the planet that I would ever, 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 ever trust with my money. Ever. Sure, there are some great people out there who wholeheartedly want to do the right thing, who really want to set you up for success. You're never going to know that. You're never going to know that. And all of these people that I talked to before, after seminars, talking to them on the phone when I was learning the ropes, and... <laughs> Every single time it came back to these whole life plans and these IULs and all of these garbage products. Man, dude, let me tell you, they're going to have more cash value and you're going to have a fatter check from it. That's what it always came down to at the end of the day. Every conversation I ever had, well, yeah, but you're going to make more money on this product. And it's also best for the client. However you want to sling that to the court. Unfortunately, it's incredibly easy to do. I don't, I don't, no, I know. Like, no one knows about this stuff. No, they don't know about the industry. They don't know, and therefore they don't care. Because, ah, it's irrelevant, whatever my financial has, my, my financial advisor has my best interests in mind. He doesn't. Yeah, legally he does. Unfortunately, the law doesn't. And he sides with the law. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this uncut. I want you guys to have my uncut, raw opinion on all of this. And that is why that all of that is why I had to leave the industry. It rips you from the inside out. And a bunch of people can say, man, you're just being negative about all of this. And am I? Am I being negative about this? About wanting truly what's best for the clients when I can give illegal advice to my family and my friends whom I know aren't going to burn my butt on whatever I tell them that I personally would put my money into. And here's how much money I make off of all of that. It's like, I'm about to cry thinking about all this because like this is, it means so much to me. Like, and that's why I started this channel at the end of the day. And I know that this isn't going to get a ton of views either. So that's why I'm making this sooner than later. But I got into financial advising because I wanted to help people. And me knowing now, I got, I'll, I'll just say like several of my friends starting to invest because of me. And I'm not saying, oh wow, I'm doing such a great job. I'm good, good job for me and I, I need everyone to just tell me how wonderful I am. It's it's nothing like that. But it's it's because I sat my friends down and I had that 10 minute conversation with them. And I said, dude, Here's what, literally, man, just put 15% of your paycheck away, 10% even, if you can't do that, 5%. Get advantage, take advantage of your company match, man. Let's put your money in this Roth IRA. Here's why I would do that. Here are the investments or something similar that I personally would park my money into. I don't make a dime off of this, man. Here are three different companies. All of them are about the same. It's like asking where do you like to get your gasoline from? They all do the same thing. Some of them have a little bit higher fees than others, depending on the time of the year. And that's it at the end of the day. Get started investing, man. And all of my friends now, all of them are investing. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're going to be able to retire. And I personally can't guarantee anything. Although I know inside, deep inside, they're going to have millions of dollars in their retirement accounts now. All because of that simple conversation. And I'm not taking any fees from them. They're not having to pay a financial advisor to rip them off every year for the rest of their life. They're not paying into some garbage whole life policy that doesn't make sense for them in the short or long term that's incredibly difficult to get out of that they don't understand the terms of. I don't have to pay any of my advisor fees, my 
EOC, none of that anymore. And I get to do it for free. I'm not making a dime on these YouTube videos, sure. I'll uh, I'll put up some like, what ads, I'll, I'll put up AdSense whenever this reaches over a thousand subscribers, if we ever hit that, um, you know, and make five bucks a month from making these videos. Um, but people just don't know. People, people literally don't know. I'll tell you one other story really quick before I go. So in the, this brokerage company that I worked for, there were conversations that these brokers had on the phone with people that in my opinion should not have occurred, should not have occurred. They, <laughs> I will tell you guys this, if you ever call into any company ever about your 401k through your company, it's about your individual investment account, whatever it is, I am not joking. I don't care how aggravated and angry you are, you be nice to them. That's like yelling at someone in a food drive and expecting your food to not be spit in. Uh, I will tell you, they will make it a living hell for you to succeed in life if you are rude or short with them. They might sound nice and understanding on the phone, but I can assure you they will forget to include some useful information whenever you need to invest your money in a certain account or forget to allocate the second half of your funds that you specifically told them to do for you on the phone. Here's the thing. If you don't record that conversation after a certain period of time, the brokerage company loses it. Sorry, we can't prove it either way, sir. Uh, unfortunately, you just missed the last six months out of that since that's the last time you checked your account, but we'd be happy to get you into it today. That happened more often than I cared to admit. There were a bunch of other things that took place that you guys wouldn't believe. It literally sounds like it's fake. When I told my wife about this, she didn't believe me. My wife didn't believe me. Uh, so that might be a story for another day, um, or maybe not at all, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one, but one last piece that I want to leave with you guys would be day traders and accounts. Did you know banks are required internally to increase your plan, your fund's minimum balance the more that you trade? If you are a high frequency trader in an account, you're required internally, not by law, you're required internally by practically every company to have a higher minimum balance. Here's the reason why. Due to increased chances of losing account balance. The companies know they have historical statistical proof that you will fail if you are a high frequency trader trying to beat or time the market. And they know that you're going to fail. It's only a matter of time. So when people are telling me I invest in this stock and that stock, that's great. I hope it rounds out the rest of your portfolio well. There's just, there's so much information. I don't want to make this an hour long video. I know this is a different tone. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I don't know. I stopped, I stopped responding to comments. I probably won't read a lot of them anymore. There's just so, so, so much noise. I skim through the comments. I do appreciate nice comments. There's just so much noise out there. And what I realized was, especially starting up this uh, channel, even with well-articulated comments that appear grounded on the surface by whatever individual, on whatever channel, whatever video, whatever the comment says, in the nicest way possible, it doesn't, it doesn't negate the fact that that person is bringing irrelevant information to the table or they're ignorant in several other areas. It might seem sound on the surface, whatever they present. It's 
always, always one-sided. You can put like one paragraph on YouTube. Is that going to encompass the complexity of life and investing in the markets? So every time I see a comment that either A, just says, you know, I'm stupid, that's when you know you're doing something right. You're always gonna have comments like that. That person is literally either eight years old or maybe even 80 years old and they have some personal issues that they need to sift through. I really hope that they were they get through that. That's not something that I'm like, oh, you know, I just I pity them and it's nothing to do with that. It's just I am better than that as far as responding to comments like that. Where, like I, I'm not gonna respond to someone saying I'm stupid. Like, thank you. Like that's probably what I would say, to be honest, because that type of person, that's such a weak mindset. That is such a weak mindset. When someone says, F this person, F that person, this person's dumb. That was that was a well constructed argument. That was, that was really good. So just some food for thought, and uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I don't know. Subscribe, watch another video, or don't. Thanks for watching.